Singapore's property market has consistently been a hot topic with prices seeming to be ever increasing from month to month. However, what goes up must come down. The question is, when? In this video, I'm going to analyze the possibility of property price drops in 2024 for HDB resale, BTO, and condo units. When we are talking about Singapore's property market, there are several factors to consider. First is the interest rates. Rising interest rates translate to higher mortgage payments for buyers, which tend to dampen demand, leading to price adjustment. The second factor is the government policies. The Singapore government has implemented various cooling measures to curb excessive property price growth. In the past few years, we have seen ABSD percentage increases, a 15 months waiting time before private property owners under 55 years old can purchase a resale HDB, and new standard plus prime BTO classification and many more. The third factor is supply and demand. An oversupply of units can lead to price reductions, while an undersupply can drive prices upwards. HDB has been ramping up its development and for condos, we are seeing several big projects such as Normanton Park, Treasures and Tampines, and Park Clematis being completed recently, so the supply is better than before. The fourth factor is economic growth and employment. A strong economy and robust employment market typically bolster demand for housing, driving up prices. But on the other hand, rising unemployment can lead to weaker demand and downward price pressures. And last but not least, the fifth factor is the global economic outlook. While you might think that the Middle East is geographically far away from Singapore, but the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine could lead to a disruption in oil supplies if the war widens to other Middle East countries. This could lead to higher inflation and interest rates, which could make it more expensive to borrow money and buy property. So with those five factors in mind, let's talk about HDB resale prices first. In 2023, the government announced HDB BTO's new framework to classify projects as standard, plus, and prime. I have discussed this in my other video, but in summary, plus and prime BTO projects have a longer 10-year MOP, a subsidy recovery scheme upon resale, an income ceiling for future potential buyers, PR couples not eligible to buy, and whole flat rental is also not allowed even after the MOP has ended. Although the new classification will only apply to new BTO projects launched from mid-2024 onwards, it already has an impact on the current resale HDB markets. This is because some property agents are using the new public housing model to push up asking price. They market these existing resale HDB flats as being in potentially plus classified locations but without the restriction of an actual plus BTO project. And with the high interest rates, coupled with the waiting time for private property owners to enter the resale HB market, nowadays people tend to be more cautious before purchasing a condo. This means these segments of the population will buy resale HDBs if they are not willing to wait for a BTO. Due to all these factors, I predict that HDB resale flat prices will continue to increase, especially those in good locations. Furthermore, we also cannot disregard the emotional aspect of the sellers. I mean, if your neighbor just sold their flat for $800,000 and your flat is the exact same size and same development, would you sell your flat for $500,000? No, right? Sellers and their agents will try to outdo the most recent transaction around the vicinity. So, unfortunately for now, it seems like HDB resale prices will continue to increase. The general rule of thumb is, if you need to buy for your own stay, it's in a good location, the project is relatively young, the flat is on a high floor, and you are able to hold the unit for a long period of time, let's say beyond 7 or even 10 years, typically you will still be able to see a profit when you exit. Okay, next let's talk about potential BTO prices. When introducing the new standard plus and prime BTO classification, Prime Minister Lee did say that one of the intent is to ensure HDB remains affordable in the long run. There will also be more subsidies for plus and prime BTO projects, although some of them will be clawed back if you sell the flat, but BTO prices are more within the government controls. I suspect that BTO prices will remain relatively flat or become slightly cheaper. Next, 
how about condo prices? When we talk about condos, I think we need to break it down even further. New launches, mass market condos, and luxury condos. For condo new launches, we have seen already some signs of developers getting nervous such as more and more deferred payment schemes reappearing in the market and the closing of Pine Grove Parcel B bidding which ended up lower than when UOL paid for Parcel A. The ABSD increase for foreigners to 60% certainly doesn't help the developers either as now they can't count on the influx of foreign wealth to snap up these condo units. With the typical new launch 3-bed condo now over $2 million, this also limits the amount of HDB owners that are able to upgrade. Although they can sell their HDB for $700,000 for example, it is still a huge gap to reach $2 million even with a mortgage loan. You might ask, but hey, Jaden Condo sales launch was transacted with an average price of 2,451 PSF and the developer said it's almost sold out even though it's in Jurong. Well, my conclusion is that if the new condo launch is targeting the mass market, has good connectivity to public transport and amenities, I think the project can still sell. This means the price will continue to increase from one launch to the next. This is because it seems that there are many Singaporeans who are still doing well financially and they are just waiting for the right project. But on the other hand, if it's a luxury condo launch, I think the developer will struggle to move the units especially because 60% ABSD is imposed on foreigners while at the same time, they have a very limited Singaporean buyer pool. So I think the developers will be more inclined either to postpone the launch of luxury condos or lower the price so it can be more appealing. For mass market condo resale units, I think prices will be relatively stable. The current high interest rates generally make it more difficult for HDB owners to upgrade to a condo. At the same time, foreigners also won't be keen to enter the condo market with the 60% ABSD. For condo owners who want to purchase HDB, the 15-month wait also acts as a deterrent. If they have to rent out, typically the landlord will set a minimum of 2 years rental period so that's an additional cost to be considered. So if they need to downgrade, they might be more compelled to move to a smaller condo instead of entering the resale HDB market. So all in all, I think mass market condo resale units will be relatively stable. The exception would be for prices for resale condos that are in good locations, freehold or relatively young in terms of leasehold, high floors or near favorite schools, which I believe their prices will continue to rise although not as extreme. However, I think the wild card of it all is the global economy. If World War III started and the world fell into a deep recession, we might see prices falling down across different types of properties. But in any case, don't forget that the government is monitoring and still has a lot of levers to adjust all the cooling measures if there are signs that the property prices start crashing or still rise too high. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.